Hey guys. So I wanted to do a follow up to that video of. Let me start that again. Hey guys. I want to have John tell you about what he learned from this shield and axe versus shield and sword video. And the reason I want John in here to do this is he has such a unique point of view for feedback because not only are we using the rebated swords and axes, but he's one of the few people that have swung sharp steel at another person. And so I want to talk to John a little bit about this. So John, thanks yeah. for being willing to talk to us about this. Oh, my pleasure. Tell me, what did you find about fighting against or moving against an ax and a shield? So we made the joke beforehand, of course, it's scary. Yeah. Um, but the truth of it there is coming back to this, the part where we did tests on these shields here with sharp swords. Um, and the one thing we didn't do, and it was a reminder as we were working on this, um, especially when we worked on that cl up close grip where we were underneath the head of the ax, this is where it really the came into play. Grip. Yeah, the choke grip there, choke grip. Um, this reminded me when we did the test with these shields with Hacking Civilization. By the way, people, check him out. Yeah, um, definitely. Shannon Moore, Hacking Civilization. He's the one that built these shields, and they are fantastic shields. Um, just to, real quick before we move on more, I just want you to look at the face of the shield. Here's where the ax is cutting in, and you can see what it's doing to the hide of the shield. Here, let me move it a little bit closer. So you can see how it's actually cutting in, but because it's not, John wasn't just standing there and using it like a door and letting me cut into the door with an ax, because he's taking angles, I'm just sliding off. He's sliding, he's shedding right away from me there. I'm not gonna absorb that impact. So take a look at Hacking Civilization. It's a wonderful piece. But when we tested these here, we did a different test than we've seen a lot of people do shield tests. You held the shield. Which I'll tell some, you is scary. Put on some protective gear, which thank you for that, <laughs> and then asked me to take a sharp sword and swing at him. Yeah, one of the things I wanted to do, which was a little different than what we see in a lot of testing of shields, is either the shield is stationary, it's on a, on a holder and they're just hacking into it, again, then it's a door. Or if somebody's holding it, they're focusing on hitting the shield. And any martial artist, any person knows that if somebody has a shield, I don't want to hit the shield, I want to hit the guy holding it. So in our test, I specifically asked John to hit me. And I was wearing that mail that's right behind us. So that he, if I messed up, which it was entirely possible, I would still have the protection on. So, and I want that background here right now, because when we did that test, it was a very different fight. My sword would cut into the shield a little bit with many of my cuts. And I'd either bind in it, or I would get slowed down, or I'd simply just stop with the bind there in the, sh in the, in the shield. Can I add to that bind? Please, yeah. So, how he hit was actually something that, because of the way he was striking, but also because of the way I was defending. If I've got the shield and we're here and he cuts in at me on this side and I do that, it's a shallow cut. Do it again. He does that and I jam my shield into it. It was a deeper cut. So I actually affected the depth of his penetration into my shield with how I responded to it. And that's a really important piece to look at there. So when we played the choked grip with the shield and, and axe, I looked at the, the actual technique of what was happening in that, the, the actual thing that happened if this was a sharp weapon fight. What would have happened? Well, my sword would have bitten into his shield and got stuck, got jammed in there. Can we talk about the sh sword real quick? Yeah. You mentioned another thing. 
earlier before we started filming, and that's if I have a sharp sword and John has a sharp sword, I am not yeah. going to be swinging my sword with the power that would be required to cut his arm off. And the reason is that if I miss, all that energy pulls my sword around behind me, opening up. If I'm giving everything that I've got to take a swing at Stephen right now here, and I don't make contact, and I'm going to go over here, all that energy has to go somewhere. I'm not just going to stop that here without an injury. I've already torn the shoulder trying to do something similar. It's not going to happen without severe injury. It's got to go somewhere, and that's going to create a large motion. Which is all my target. Look at everything here. So if I'm fighting somebody who's got a sharp sword, why am I going to cut them like I'm trying to cut through a bottle? And remember, this is a force multiplier. It's not a hammer. So it's not like you're trying to pound a nail into a board. You are hitting this knowing that there's going to be a transfer transference of energy through the edge so you're not swinging it like a hammer. You don't need to. That's fallacy. It's an unnecessary force piece here right now. I don't need more than that simple action right there a lot of the time. Just that simple extension right there. But the physics of the sword weapon do the job for you. Uh, that's something that I was working with Adam Savage on, on his show, Building Savage Builds. We've been taught that we need to swing our sword hard. The problem with that is that all that energy is still in place. We go back to Newtonian laws. So if you don't hit another object to stop your weapon, me, your weapon's going to continue pulling you around until something stops it, you. And if you're out of place, but I'm not, I now have this huge amount of time to attack into, or you have that huge amount of time to attack into me. Would you agree? I would agree, absolutely, yeah. So we're not going to be swinging these swords like sledgehammers. But let's take it back to that choked grip on the axe. So, John, go ahead, please. Yeah. So when you were there, when I threw the cut, what would I do? What's my sword going to do? We talked about that with that sharp. It's going to bite into this shield here. And when we worked on this here, we looked at transference of tool. So he first initiated his defense with the shield. So, and then he didn't pull the shield back. He pushed his axe half forward. I punched his sword blade with my axe out. What's that going to do if it's a sharp weapon? It's going to get it out of his shield. And there means that he is able to do the second action, which is once that goes, roll over the top while he drops it down and strike. Because if he doesn't do that, my sword's stuck in his, in his shield. So if he rotates, is he going to be able to do the same thing? Yeah, I, not with that extra lever that he's got hooked into me. If you attach two things together right now, okay, and you try to manipulate one yeah, end, right? You can, he can manipulate one end. I can also manipulate the other end here right now. And he has much more control than I have. So that transference, uh, so if you'll put your, your, your sword here, mm -hmm. right, so it's bit, it just bit into the edge of my shield. My ax does that, and then I guide it down so I can punch forward. Because as we've discussed in other videos, Every action is a combination of contraction and expansion. If I'm fully expanded, I can't expand anymore. And when I've blocked it out and I've punched out to remove him from my shield, I'm expanded. There's no further place I can go with that axe. So I have to contract. He's not going to be able to do it a whole lot there if he just walks forward with this extended. And I'm guessing he's probably not going to just stand there and let me do it either. No. <laughs> One can hope. Dreams can come <laughs> true somewhere else. It's just that one's not going to happen. Okay. So what else did you pick up from? Um, so aside from 
the thinking of that just being the fascinating system of being able to test what a sharp sword and does to a traditionally made shield not a chunk of plywood a traditionally made shield there's there's a difference between the two yep. here a chunk of plywood is going to ruin my sword and i'm not going to do a whole lot to that plywood but one of these things here it's gonna it's a lot different one thing that we did not do for safety's sake when we were doing our test is i did not use my sword defensively which means i took the full brunt of his force into my shield and there was no transference of energy highly recommend you go down our list here first of course please subscribe need loves um but go down our list find our shield testing or go to hacking civilization you can also find the link on his page um and, and look at it also how he made the shields so highly it's recommend. not a secret it's uh Shannon has an amazing amount of information and in his research and his trials and errors, he has been in contact with some of the leading experts in the world in this. And he's talked to them about how to make these. So I think, you know, looking at bog finds and historical pieces, museum acquisitions, these are probably as close as we're gonna get to the original ones because I don't want to fight with a thousand-year-old mm -hmm. shield. I Put it up on my, on my wall, but I don't want to fight with it. Yeah. Um, but the, going back, the second thing that I, that, I rem that I learned here, which was a fantastic reminder, just as a martial artist training in constant all the time, as much as I can, just because your opponent's tools changed doesn't mean you have to change your technique. Um, we have a few techniques and you can find them in a few of our classes and everything there. If you've ever trained with us or seen any of our videos where you simply take a tool and you bypass it and it's up that close to me because I'll just move the target right on past me here. And I was able to do that with a weapon that has almost the same mass as my sword and almost all of that mass is at the very top where that axe is swinging. And I did the same technique I do to be able to collect a sword, and I moved that axe right past me and away from me. But when he did, can you do that again? Yeah. As John mentioned, look how close he keeps it to his body. His elbow stays in. It's going out a little bit now, but that's because of the chair. But the elbow stays in tight to the body. He's using the false edge of the sword to move my attacking weapon outside of his silhouette. So even though I have a weapon with the, the same approximate mass as his sword, and I'm hitting him with that same mass in this one head, he's still able to move it out with that. So train, train hard, but more importantly than training hard, train correctly. And as important, inside of that train correctly part, trust yourself. And trust the, the actions. And trust the actions. If you don't have the trust behind it, it's never going to work. If you trust in yourself to do it, and you trust in the action that it's going to keep you safe, it's going to work. One of my favorite sayings in class, in the side sword class and other classes, but we see it a lot in side sword and long sword. If you don't trust an action, the action won't work. If the action doesn't work, how could you trust it? And it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. So you need to learn to trust your actions, train them until you no longer need to think about them. And the trust is built in that repetition. But once you've trained your body and your mind to do certain actions, they'll do it. The tool is not as important as the weapon. Did you pick anything else up? Um, I mean, that was the, a lot. Th those are the biggest things that I have right there. Um, there's so much to be able to feel and work with there. Um, and I'm going to add this to the other live stream when I edit it. 
So this will probably be coming out in the next few days, uh, edited and all together. Thank you again for watching. Please hit the subscribe button below. And John, thank you for training with me. But more importantly, thank you for trusting me and thank you for protecting me. It's my pleasure, sir. We're swinging swords and axes at each other and it is scary and you should respect these tools because they will hurt. Yep. Thanks everyone. Take care everybody. Cool. That was nice. <laughs>